Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you a simple motion graphics technique, no animation nodes required, it's all done in Blender. So let me show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like, super, super simple. You can add some text in this little region right here, good for motion graphics, just some interesting stuff going on. So let's make this. So go over here and change your render engine to EV. You're gonna see this little camera icon. Then in your EV settings, all you'll need is screen space reflections and ambient occlusion. All right, first thing we're gonna do is hit Shift A and put in an icosphere. Right down here where it says add icosphere, put your subdivisions down to one right here so you can get this little icon here. And next thing we're gonna do is add in a meta ball. Shift A, go down to meta ball, click the ball. Now if you don't know what these are, they're really, really cool. I'll show you how they act. So say I have this and I'm gonna duplicate it. They sort of mold into each other. So it's really cool if you're using particles and they intersect, they just sort of mold into each other and it gives a really cool effect. So I'm gonna delete this and just gonna keep this one and put it over here. Next thing we're gonna do is add a particle system to our icosphere. So go down here to particles, click new, and right here, click hair. So you're gonna get all this stuff and this is way too many. So we're gonna do a little trick. If you click source and change faces to verts, now it puts a particle at every one of these little points. And we just have a few rather than, uh, rather than around 500. Now let's tell it what to use for the hair. So go down here to render in your particle settings and where it says render as, click object, and then down here on object, click your M ball. And now you have the meta ball. They're super, super low poly, and unlike most objects where you can just use a subdivision surface, you have to control the subdivision somewhere else. So you click on the meta ball, and you'll see this little icon down here. So for the viewport, you can change the resolution right here on resolution viewport, but for render, I would slide it all the way down to 0.025. That's gonna look good on the render. For the viewport, of course, you're gonna to wanna to keep it fairly low poly so that it animates smoothly. So we're gonna put it on there and just sort of play with it as we design. Next thing we're gonna do is animate this icosphere. First thing you wanna do is add a wireframe to this, and then you can sort of, if you want the whole thing to disappear, you can bring it all the way down to zero, or you can sort of show the bars and have it sort of, if you wanna keep it in the design like that, and you can show what's actually happening, but I'm gonna hide it. So now what we wanna do is animate these sort of moving around. So we're gonna go and add a curve, we do a circle, and we're gonna add an empty plane axis. Now select your empty, go over here to the constraints, and add object constraint, and click follow path, and then on target, click the Bezier circle. So now if you play with the offset, you can see it going around this circle. Before we animate this, go down here to end, and we're gonna give it 120 frames. So that's gonna be a five second animation. And then make sure in your edit preferences, go to animation and that your default interpolation is set to linear. And then now we can animate this offset. So right click, insert keyframe, go to the very end, go to the very end here and click 100 and insert keyframe. And so now it should rotate all the way around it seamlessly. Next thing you wanna do is click on the icosphere, go to the modifiers and add some displacement to it. So I'm gonna take off the wireframe so you can actually see what we're doing. So add some displacement right here, click new, and I'm gonna go over here and click a clouds texture. So if we move it around, nothing's happening. They're not following the object. And that's because the displace is under the particle setting. So we need to just click this up arrow and now they're gonna follow our object. So you can see now that they follow our object, and now you can get a good idea of what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna give it a strength of about, say 1.6 for now. And then now that we have our empty animating around this circle, we'll just click on our icosphere, go over to the displace on local, go to object, and then select the empty. And so now they're gonna animate with this, and then we're gonna go back and add our wireframe make it disappear. And then now we have this animating pretty terribly. So you can just click on the circle and just bring it down and it slows down the animation just like that. So you can just scale it up to a good speed that you want right around there. And then I'm gonna take the icosphere and bring the displacement down a little bit because I want them to kind of intersect just like that. All right, now let's add some lighting and some texturing. So let's go over here to the plane, scale up the plane a little bit and then bring it down, and then we're gonna hit Shift D, our X90, give it a back, bring it back over here, and then let's add a camera. So Shift A, bring our camera in, 
and then control alt zero snaps the camera to view and then you can go over here and I'm gonna click on our camera go to the camera settings and change the focal length to be pretty wide right around there and then let's scale up our background here and our object let's go to the EV view and see how that looks so bring it down a little bit all right let's add in a light so we're gonna use an area light to get some soft lighting so shift a light bring in an area light and then scale it up here and I'm hit Z go to render view so we can see what's happening and then scale it up just like that and if you're not getting soft shadows go to your EV settings right down here on shadows click soft shadows just like that and you'll get some pretty nice soft shadows going on so let's add some colors to these walls so click new let's make it metallic just like that and then bring down the color quite a bit and then add that same shader to the background so now let's add one more area light We'll bring it this way so it's pointing to the right side of our illustration here. Well, animation, not an illustration. And looks like we have something pretty good right now. Let's go and add some shading to this. Okay, so let's go to shading. Keep in mind that Blender treats all of these metal balls as one object or one ball. So we're going to be shading all of these at once. So click New. And we're going to add a color ramp because we're going to be adding two textures to this and we're going to want to color those textures. So we're going to use that and then we're going to add a Voronoi. Voronoi texture, plug the Voronoi into the color ramp. Now you can see some stuff going on and we're going to add a Musgrave to give us some swirly shading. So now it's all swirly and let's add some color to this. So we're going to make this blue and we're going to make this side a purple. And let's just bring it in. Kind of bring it around till you have what you like. So we're going to put it out right around there. And let's make this metallic. Just like that. And so now we have a nice animation. See how it's looking. And by the way, this will loop seamlessly. So no need to worry about animation in the looping side. That's already done. So you can just see how that animates just like that. And then for composition, of course, if you plan on adding some text or anything like that, you can just hit G and sort of move it over like this. And there you go. Let's see how it looks when it renders. Make sure that when you click on the meta ball, go down here to your settings and bring, it, bring your render all the way down this way. And then click render, render image. So this is what it looks like. Perfectly smooth, some good lighting and some good shading. Let's go to the export settings just to make sure we get that. So right here in this little printer icon, change it from PNG to FFmpeg video. On encoding, change it to MP4. And then I would put it on high quality. And then you would save it, click right here to save wherever you want, and you hit render, render animation. But there you go. You made a simple motion graphics thing. If you make it, my Instagram's linked in the description. You can send it to me. I love seeing you guys' works, and thanks for watching.